Hello, Finksters. I hope you had a good week.、Uh, happy Friday! And for this tutorial,、um, we are going to look at OpenCV in in general.、Um, so, if you have not learned or used OpenCV before, then this tutorial can be a good introduction. And specifically, we are going to use OpenCV. To do basic image processing,、uh, they are basic but、uh, quite useful. So we are going to learn about five different image processing techniques. So, namely,、um, converting color channels, image resizing, image blending. Blurring as well as thresholding. So, come on board and get your notebook ready. So, before we begin, just to let you know that、um, the complete blog article uh, uh, is available at blog.thinkster.com, and the code tutorial、um, for this article is available at. The GitHub link, so the blog post link and the GitHub link will be provided at the description below. Feel free to、uh, refer to those. Okay, OpenCV. This is the to-go library.、Um, if you are coding in Python and you would like to、uh, manipulate your image data. So before we do that,、uh, first of all, I would say create a virtual environment. If you are working on Windows,、uh, I think Anaconda、uh, is the best、uh, is the best tool to go. You can、um, go to the Environments tab and then、uh, click on the Create、uh, to create a virtual environment、um, to create a, se a separate container for every of your code project. So I've done this, and I I will just go straight to my Jupyter notebook. First step first, <laughs>、uh, I think you already familiarize yourself with this.、Um, we have to install some libraries and import the modules. For this tutorial, we are going to need, of course, OpenCV.、Um, OpenCV is, I think, originally、uh, created. In C plus plus, and then、uh, a few years, well, since then,、uh, it's also available for Python. And we also need NumPy、um, because OpenCV will load、uh, our image data in the form of NumPy arrays. So if we want to manipulate、um, those images, we are going to use NumPy. Let's say for slicing, for indexing, and whatnot. And Matplotlib,、uh, we are going to use that to visualize our images. We'll see, we'll see as we go along. And after these three、uh, modules are installed, then we can import them. So for OpenCV, it's import CV2, and then we import NumPy as NP, and then the same old import Matplotlib dot Pyplot as PLT. And this is the magic command、um, to display、um, figures、um, that is loaded by Matplotlib in line. Means that for these output cells,、uh, the images will be displayed on the output、uh, on the output cells itself rather than appearing on a separate windows. But I think、uh, in the recent、uh, versions of Jupyter Notebook, this magic command is not required anymore. But I just put this here、um, for earlier versions.、Uh, it it makes no harm. So our first step is to、uh, load some images、uh, in our notebook. So the first one you can see it's it's image grayscale, and if you compare image grayscale with the images, you'll see that the lines the same except that for the grayscale. You pass in the parameter of zero, which means that the Imri method of OpenCV will load this photo dot JPEG as 
only one channel, which is a shade of gray, a gray scaled image. And that is why when this wearable um, is shown, um, so if we want to see the shape of this uh, image gray scale wearable, you'll see that it's only um, two dimensional, means this is the height, 5,563, with the width of 3,709. And because it only has one channel, it does not appear uh, for the third um, for the third wearable, for the third dimension. So in contrast, um, because this photo is a colored photo, when we load it as colored photo, the image shape has another dimension, which is three. Um, the way to interpret that is height, width and channels means that uh, 5,563 times 3,709. So one layer for red, one layer for green and another layer for blue colors. So there are three color channels. If we want to visualize uh, the image, uh, just simply uh, visualize it using this code, plt matplotlib.imshow. And you might realize that um, this, this image looks a little bit weird in terms of the color channel. That's because when you use, when we use imread to read any photo, any images, uh, it reads it in the color channels of BGR. So blue, green, and red. So it is not the usual red, green, and blue. And when this image, is being passed to the imshow method of matplotlib. The matplotlib function mistakenly, well, uh, by default takes the the first channels at red, uh, the second channels at blue uh, as blue, and the third one as uh, uh, sorry RGB. So in the in the sequence of RGB, uh, but this OpenCV loaded image is in the color channel of BGR. So there is a make mismatch between the red color and the blue color here. And that is why it looks like this. To fix this, um, there is a method in OpenCV. It's called convert color, CVT color, where you pass in the same image and then you say CV2 dot color one, and you want to change from BGR to RGB. And so this image underscore RGB wearable will um, have the image displayed in the RGB color channel. And so when you use matplotlib to show it again, uh, it shows a normal colored image. Okay, now you have just learned the first technique. <laughs> image processing technique in uh, OpenCV. Next, we are going to move on to resizing image. Um, image resize is uh, very useful, especially if you are building a um, machine learning model for, um, for image data. Uh, usually you want to um, resize the image either to make all image data appear the same size or um, you want to decrease the memory um, for the machine learning model training and evaluation. So you might resize that them to be either of the same size or make it smaller. We are using the RGB image um, for this computation. So um, just to remind you, the shape is this, three channels. And this is the resize method. So cv2.resize, and then we pass in the RGB image. And then we want to define the dimen dimensional size, uh, which it is in terms of width first and then height. And before this, we already defined the width and height variables. And it's very important to note that uh, only integer values are accepted. So we take the width of the original image, uh, RGB dot shape one. So height is the first channel, width is the second channel, 
and and then the channel is the third one. Sorry, I should say dimension. So the second dimension is the width dimension of the original image. We take the original image with the dimension and then divide it by two, which means that this image RGB smaller variable will have the same image resize into half of its original size. It's the same divided by two of the original height uh, dimension. Mm, actually, the D size can take any value that you pass in it. You can put it like 10, 20, 50, 100. But it's always a good practice to use a scale factor to retain the aspect ratio of the image that you're working on. So image smaller equals to half its size. So if you put the dot shape, you will see that it is half of its original size. It becomes 2781, 1854, and RGB three channels. And so when you put it uh, when you show it using Matplotlib, it might just look the same. But note that uh, the axis, the x and y axis, uh, is actually half its, half of its original size. So similarly, you can make it twice as big compared to its original size. And then you would use multiply by 2 um, for the same computation. It's the same thing, it's just that it goes from divided by two to multiplied by two. So feel free to um, get creative with the math mathematical uh, operations when you define the width and height. Um, you can do whatever you want here. <laughs> okay, so the image RGB bigger will be of the shape uh, 11,126 times um, 7,418 with three channels. Okay, it still looks the same, but the axes are different here. Next, we are moving to blending. Blending means you want to combine two images as one. So the end result will look something like this. So you take the same RGB orange image and then uh, you take another image, like a thank you, and then you blend them together. Okay, you stack them on top of each other, uh, plus some, and, and define some transparency so that you can see through two pictures as one. So the first step is, you've already familiarized yourself with this, read another image. And then the image size is 2000 times 1800 times three. So it's of a different size um, than the orange image, which is like 5,000 something. Show the image, it looks like this. It's quite squared instead of, well, it's a little bit of rectangular, but it's still of a different shape than the, the image that we want. And so we need to resize it using the technique that we've just learned. We take this image overlay and then we resize it um, into the size of the orange image. So we take the image RGB shape, its um, height, its width and height, and make the image overlay, which is the thank you image, uh, the same size. So you'll see uh, it's of the same size and it looks a little bit taller, I would say. And when both of these images are of the same size, you, you can use the add weighted method in OpenCV to basically combine both the images. So the source one would be the background image, the orange image. And the source two is the, is the foreground image, is the thank you image. And the alpha, defines the transparency level of source one and the beta uh, parameter defines the transparency level of image overlay of source two and both of these um, need to be added up to 1.0 um, feel free to experiment 
if you don't make it up to 1.0 i think the i think without adding them up to one um the image will look more pale and the gamma value is a constant value uh, you can also understand it as um defining the relative brightness of the output image so here i make it the background photo with the transparency of 30 percent and the foreground uh, photo with the transparency of 70 percent and the blended photo looks like this okay because the front photo looks not too obvious so uh, it I make it to have more weight so that it is more visible when it is being combined. So far, so good. <laughs> We've already covered three techniques. So you can see how fast and straightforward OpenCV can be. So feel free to explore around with this. And now it comes to, and now we, we come to blurring blurring as just straightforward you kind of make a sharp image to be blurred out um why do we need that <laughs> um we need to blur some image not because we want to view the <laughs> not because we want to make the image appear more artsy um but um I would take a training machine learning model for an example. Um, sometimes you want to uh, apply some machine learning model for, let's say, edge detection. Um, for that, um, maybe your image data contains too much noise and that noise uh, kind of returns you many unnecessary lines and many unnecessary edges. And here, uh, a blurring technique might come in handy um, to kind of smooth out the edges. So before you pass your image data for edge detection, um, you can blur the edges um, in the image a little bit more so that uh, only the important one shows up as the object edge instead of a lot of noise when in computation. So um, I purposefully cropped the orange image um, smaller. So I crop up just a part of the orange image to show the blurring effect better. So now um, the original image looks like this, and then I just crop the bottom right part of it. And how to crop an image? We use NumPy. Um, you use uh, we use uh, NumPy array slicing um, for this computation. Basically, out of five thousand something uh, pixels, you're cropping the image starting from the four thousand pixel up until the end. So if you don't define any value at the right side of the colon, then that means uh, take all the pixels there is until the end. Uh, it's the same for the width. So if if this uh, so this image small dot shape um, has the value of 1563 and um, 1709. And also the same three channels. It's just that um, this is only a small part of the orange RGB image. And then you blur it. <laughs> what is the what is the method for blurring in OpenCV? It's dot blur. <laughs> and then you pass in a small image and uh, give it a kernel size. What is kernel in blurring? A kernel is basically like a um, paintbrush or a sponge that you use to smudge the pixels of your original image and, and, and make it blurry. And the kernel size means uh, how big of a paintbrush or how big of a sponge 
that you want to use uh, to blur the image. It's uh, it's mathematical <laughs> computation, uh, understand on an intuition level. So um, just imagine that I use a paintbrush of size 100 pixels times times 100 pixels, and then I use it to smudge the image. And this is how it looks like. The image is blurred. Last one um, is uh, image thresholding. Image thresholding is different from grayscaling images. Grayscaling images essentially means that you make you load the you load a colored image in monochrome. So the image still contains a shade of gray. So from totally white to totally black, there is 255 variations. But thresholding means that you're essentially mm, setting a value for the image. Let's say uh, if the value is, uh, if a grayscale value is ranging between 0 to 255, and then you set a threshold value uh, of 127, it means that for the pixels that is larger than 127, it will be converted into 1, it will become 1. Uh, and for the pixels that are lower than the value 127, uh, they will become value 0, they will be converted into value 0. So. And a thresholded image essentially contains values of either zero or one. So it is either completely black or completely white. We'll see how it goes. Uh, for this, we are using the grayscale image uh, for the thresholding operation to make things easier. So this is the uh, grayscale image of the orange picture. And then after you threshold it, you pass in the grayscale image and then you set the threshold value at uh, in the middle of between 0 to 255. And then Maxwell is the maximum value um, of this image. So you set the maximum value as 255. And um, you set the thresholding type. Um, actually, there are many thresholding types uh, to choose. Uh, the most basic one is trash binary. Trash binary basically means that you make the image to either black or white. And then there is another uh, type, which is trash binary inverse, which means um, you, you turn the value other, uh, above the threshold value to be black and the pixel values that's lower than the threshold value to be white. It's the inverse of trash binary. And then it, it will return uh, two variables uh, when you call the threshold method. Uh, the first one is red. Red just uh, returns uh, the threshold value. And then trash one is the threshold image itself. So threshold image uh, display uh, as grayscale. So you'll see the image has turned into either black or white pixels. Can you see the difference? Here, grayscale, it's a shade of gray. You can see the shadows and everything. And here, the threshold is either black or white. So you can imagine how, um, how it can make the an edge detection model uh, works more uh, effectively. Okay, um, I hope you like this tutorial. It's five fast and straightforward techniques in OpenCV uh, for you to begin exploring your image data in Python. Hope to see you soon. Thank you and goodbye.